ladies and gentlemen, now hosting the Rizzo cast, put your hands together for Steven Rizzotto. What is going on, everybody, and welcome. My name is Steven Rizzotto. I cover the San Francisco Giants for SF Bay. And I'm the host of RizzoCast, the podcast that features current and former big league players, coaches, fans, media, and others who are regarded as some of the brightest minds around the game of baseball. Today's guest is Owen Chaffin, a right-handed pitcher at St. Louis University, a product of Overland Park, Kansas. Owen went 5-1 with a 4.84 ERA in 14 starts for the Billikens last season. Quick fun fact, I saw Owen pitch when St. Louis came to play San Jose State in San Jose on March 26th, and it was his best outing of the season, firing eight and two thirds innings while striking out six. We discussed the 2023 season um, for the Billikens, uh, balancing academics, taking the JUCO route, uh, preparation between start days, his pitching mindset, bat flips, fist pumps, a preview for the next season, and so much more coming up next on RizzoCast. This is episode number 143, and let's get started. All right, and we're with Owen Chaffin, and Owen is nice enough to take some time and join the show. Owen, how you doing? Welcome. Doing great, doing great. Just grinding away. Yeah, I do want to start with kind of the present times. I mean, your season with, with St. Louis University um, ended at the end of March. A lot of guys maybe keep playing during the summer with maybe a collegiate summer team or some focus on getting stronger during the off season. Uh, what are you up to at this point in the summer? It's still kind of very early in the off season, but what's kind of keeping you busy at this point? Um, being my fourth year in college, ever since freshman year, I chose to pretty much take the summer off from throwing in games. For the most part, I take that time to work with the trainer I have here. Um, working mechanics, working pitch, reckon, like pitch movement, making sure everything's going to be good for the next season, as long with the strength coach. But right now I'm just working with uh, Adapt, which is uh, Jake McFarlane, and been working there for a couple of years with him. He's a great guy, great coach. And then I've, ba- I've been bouncing around strength coaches, but for the most part I've been using the one from St. Louis. And uh, – just getting stronger, getting faster, getting more athletic, and hopefully being able to bounce back with an even better year next year. And when does that kind of start to ramp up a little bit? Because, you know, a lot of people maybe focus on a little bit before the holidays. Maybe that's too late because I know there could be some fall ball stuff happening. How long does it take you to get ready for the season? And and when do you kind of really start ramping it up? Uh, This year, I took four weeks off after our loss to George Mason. I kind of just Ramped down, didn't touch a baseball for a couple of weeks, kind of just traveled around with uh, my little brother's team, did some coaching there. And then uh, it's just started up about Monday of last week on my throwing program. And we'll just gradually work our way back into bullpens and making I needed to pick up an off speed pitch this off season, So that'll be the main focus for the most part. And then once I'm ramped up, me and Jake are planning on going into a below phase. I haven't had one since my junior year of high school. So that's going to be another focus of mine. Um, but for now, just a slow, gradual ramp up, try to stay healthy through a lot of pitches this year. So we're going to take our time into getting ready for the season. No doubt. And, and side question, people may want to know as a college student and someone in that area of the country, are you keeping up at all with the college world series? And if so, I guess how closely? Yes, um, big time. I've been watching pretty much every game. It's been an absolute blast watching. I watched the Florida Oral Roberts game last night, and that was just so much drama happening. Like, that's just, I personally, I don't love watching baseball, but there's nothing better than college baseball when it comes to playoffs. And it's definitely been an enjoyable one so far this year. Why don't you like watching baseball? I mean, you play baseball. Is it just difficult to kind of keep your eyes on it the whole time, like two hours and 30 minutes or whatever it may be? Being a PO, it's like you only really, being a starter this year, you really only get to pitch one game and then you sit around and watch about 30-ish innings of baseball. (laughs) And after a little while, it gets a little exhausting. And 
it is a very slow game and it's a very long game. Um, so for the most part, I don't love to sit and watch it, but when it comes to playoff baseball, there's honestly nothing better because every pitch means something huge. So um, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch this year's World Series so far. Yeah, and people here in the Bay Area are kind of keeping tabs with it because obviously Stanford is involved. And I don't know if it's on the level of like March Madness or college football here, but is there any like significance where you are kind of being in the Midwest, not too far from Omaha? Uh, is it is it bigger? I mean, obviously you can't talk for the East Coast or the West Coast, but is it a big thing where you are? Oh, yeah, it's huge. I mean... All of my friends, my family, we always, when I was little, went up to the College World Series every single year, caught a game or two. I mean, some of the best memories I've had on the baseball field or watching baseball has come from going up there with my parents and with my family. So uh, it's it's really big around here, especially the fact that Oral Roberts is in there. Uh, my mom was born in Tulsa, so we're obviously rooting for Oral Roberts. There's a kid that's uh, Whipperman for Oral Roberts uh, went to Blue Valley High School, which is just down the street from where I live. Um, never personally knew him, but just gave me something else to root for. And then uh, personally, I'm a huge Texas fan. So that drop, that lost ball in the lights really was <laughs> a heck of a shot at me. But um, it was definitely enjoyable to watch. And now that Texas is out, I'm going all Oral Roberts all the way. That's got to be the worst way to end a game. I saw that and I was like, man. And apparently like there had been something in the past where Stanford has like a, a light pro or not a light problem, but they're just, their lights are like historically dim. So mm -hmm. it was an issue going in and it ended up costing them that that sucks though. But um, it, it is funny that, you know, obviously there's some connection that you have to Oral Roberts and people have that when they're rooting for teams, especially in college where it's like, Oh, I know someone, you know, on this team or I played someone on this team, like little league, how uh, there's that one kid that always goes viral. And then he becomes oh. the rooting interest, like big Al a few years ago, who just wanted to hit dingers. Oh. Yeah. That was so much fun to follow. Big Al was a legend for sure. He was the man. I wonder what he's up to now, but um, <laughs> all right, back to St. Louis. Um, your team uh, finished the season 33 and 23 this season. Um, I, I believe that was tied for third in your conference and winning percentage. Tell me a little bit about this season and kind of what went right for the club this year. I mean, Hendrickson brought in a great group of guys. We had a huge uh, transfer portal grab. Um, we had close to 20 new guys on the team, eight to nine freshmen, and then 12 uh, JUCO transfers or some guys came from D ones. We had some Arcan we had an Arkansas transfer, a Houston transfer. Um, so it was just a big group of new guys. And honestly, we all molded together really well. Um, the guys that were there in the past did a great job of leading us. And although we know that we could have done better and we had some games really slip away. There were some midweeks throughout the year that we kind of let slip, but it was like one game, our hitting was on one game, our pitching was on. And then once it came to playoffs, we really put it together up until that last day. And it just, we kind of ran out of steam when it came to hitting. So pitchers picked up the pace, but we just really couldn't put it together. And one thing that I noticed um, was the eight and 12 record on the road. Now, I mean, explain kind of the importance of, of you know, of playing on the road and, and how tough it is. Cause I'm sure it's not easy going into another team's house and, uh, I know the, the record may reflect a little bit of that, but how hard is it playing on the road at the college level? Man, we, our road schedule was extremely tough when it comes to our conference. VCU is one heck of a team when it comes to home field, same with Dayton. And then Davidson is just such a power pack team, yeah. had really good arms, but those bats could really launch it out of there. And Davidson's park plays pretty small and, for the most part, our pitching, it comes to, we pitch to a lot of contact. We're not a huge, we weren't a huge strikeout team this year, but we were really good at being efficient, getting early contact. And it really showed there just, it, our park plays extremely big. So it was, it was a really difficult uh, road schedule. And I, I felt like we came out pretty well. We let some games slip, obviously, but at the same time, I felt like we pretty much fought to the last inning on almost every game we played this year on the road. 
And uh, kind of turning gears, you're a communications major, and and there's obviously you know, like the uh, still the school aspect to your college career. Like you're not just there to play baseball as much as you probably would want that. You still got to focus on the academics. How has that been trying to kind of balance it? Um, you know, because a lot of a lot of teams they take pride in their 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 GPA numbers and everything. Is St. Louis like that? And 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 how much pride do you take in the academic side of it? Well, actually, I had to I had to declare as a communication major in the fall. I'm actually an economics major now. Okay. Um, coming from my JUCO, it was a lot of transfer credits didn't go into St. Louis the way that I was supposed to. Um, I was at my JUCO for three years, so I kind of racked up some credits, and I ended up ending the year with uh, two associates. I had a um, computer science associate, and I have one in uh, accounting as well, but the credits just didn't transfer correctly, so we had to say I was a communications major, but I was still taking econ classes, so now this next year I'll be an econ major, but uh, SLU was a very difficult uh change when it comes to academics. Um, I went to a pretty academic strong high school. The Blue Valley District is one of the top districts in the country when it comes to academics. And I went from that to a JUCO and obviously the JUCO academics took it really seriously. My family is very big on making sure we end up with good grades. And when I came from my JUCO to SLU, it was just a punch in the face, honestly. Um, our coaches did a great job on making sure we stayed on top of our grades, making sure we got our homework done. The teachers were amazing at St. Louis this year at really being flexible when it comes to us being on the road and um, making sure we have some extensions on homework if we get really busy. I know it was really hard to be able to pull out the laptop in the hotel room after a start or even the night before a start and doing all of this econ homework, especially when it comes to playoff time and when you really want to focus on baseball, but you got to get those finals done well. So I think that St. Louis did a great job at pushing our academics and making sure that we stayed on top of it, on top of the fact that this school was really difficult. Um, but at the same time, you come out with a good GPA, you get your degree from St. Louis and can truly go anywhere you want. So that's definitely the goal at the moment. Yeah, I I would never be able to like do anything after a game or even before a game. So, uh, I mean, kudos to you and and your your teammates for trying to get that done. Uh, and and that was pretty funny that you mentioned economics because I was reading through the baseball roster, and like everybody was like economics and sports oh. management. And I was like, this is the most college baseball team thing I've ever seen. Because like every college you go to, it's like. You know, maybe a few finances in there. So it's it's a lot of, do you guys like talk a lot about that at all? Like, oh, uh, we're all economic majors. <laughs> I mean, it definitely helps because yeah. everybody really can help each other out with homework and making sure we understand it. We had some guys that were really good at economics, some struggled, and we did a great job of picking up one another when it comes to tutoring each other. So the fact that I had a lot of classes with a lot of my teammates and made it a lot easier to understand the curriculum there. Um, especially with some of the guys that maybe didn't understand it as well. Um, numbers come really easy to me, obviously having that accounting degree. And it, I was really able to help some of my teammates out when it comes to studying and making sure that they understand the curriculum. Yeah, you guys are going to be taking over like the economy in the Midwest pretty soon. All the St. Louis baseball team. Uh, sure. So well, let's pivot to you a little bit. Um Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, I mean, how, how did you kind of get into baseball and, and when did you realize that it was something that you really enjoyed and, you know, thought you could go pretty far with? Well, it actually goes all the way back to when I was really, really little. We spent a few years in Dodge City, Kansas. Um, it's more Western Kansas, but we moved here. Um, I had some really good family friends that one of them played high school baseball at Trinity in Wichita. Uh, his name is Josh Pilecki. He was honestly my idol my entire life when it comes to baseball. He took some time, played at Washburn for a little while, followed him throughout that. And I was able to be around the dugout whenever he came to Kansas City and played. But for the most part, just really sucked onto the game when I was really young. Um, I, I loved I, I was a big I love hitting a lot. Um, just it came apparent as I got older, I was just not going to be a hitter. Pitching came really easy to me. I just 
my baseball IQ was always pretty high for the most part. So it was just watching a whole lot of baseball when I was little, which might be the reason why I got burnt out on watching games. But my dad and I used to sit around and pull out a score sheet and score Royals games when I was little and kind of just got hooked on it from there on out. So the Royals were, were the team that you rooted for? They were. I'm a. I'm actually a Rangers fan now. I've been a Rangers fan for a while. I I follow a lot of the Texas sports. I have cousins that live down there in Waco. So I'm um, big Cowboys fan, big Rangers fan. So now that the Rangers are kind of putting on a push this year, I'm extremely excited to follow them, not watch, but follow them throughout the year. You probably get a lot of crap from the guys being a Cowboys fan. Oh, huge, huge. <laughs> My roommate's an Arizona Cardinals fan, so when they played each other, it was it was really enjoyable to kind of pick fights with them. But it was okay. it was a fun year for sure. Did you have any favorite players growing up? Anybody that you know you kind of looked to, and I don't want to say modeled your game after after because I whenever I hear people ask that question, I always think, well, he's his own guy, you know. But is yeah. there anybody that you watched that that you really enjoyed? I really, I was always a huge Elvis Andrews fan, hitting wise. When it came to pitching, I was a U Darvish fan. Absolutely loved watching him this year in the college or the World Baseball Classic was a lot of fun, and obviously following around this year. But lately, I've been now that Trevor Bauer is gone, and I I know I'm probably going to start up some stuff saying this, but I'm a huge Trevor Bauer fan. Um, I really loved watching his YouTube videos and. It, the dude's just so smart and I really enjoyed watching through everything, watching the pitch design that he does. Like the guy just gets the game and watching his YouTube. I feel like I've become a lot smarter when it comes to pitch design as well. And it was like very taboo when Bauer came into the league. Like not everybody was kind of accepting with, with some mm-hmm. of the stuff that he was doing with the, the stuff you do between starts. And uh, now, you know, every team's got that technology and, and, you know, I think he had that one camera before everybody else had it. Yeah. Um, and I guess one of the things that I read about you and, and you had mentioned it before is that, you know, you are a Juco product. And for a lot of people, that's a very underrated path. A lot of a lot of kids out of high school want to get that scholarship, want to go D1. But it's not that easy. And junior college, you know, you go and get your general education done. You get playing time, more importantly, instead of sitting your first two years. So why was that kind of the path uh, for you to go to junior college? Um, Out of high school, I mean, like I said, my first VLO phase ever was my junior year. Um, Over an offseason, I jumped from I was sitting like 74, 76. I was a pretty scrawny kid. Uh, Put on a little bit of weight changed my pitching instructor. uh, And by that springtime, I was able to touch 90. Um, And from there that I was at Premier Baseball and they were able to hook me up with uh, Neosho County, which is where I ended up going. I had some offers from some D2s. Uh, I was really interested in Johnson County for the longest time. I'm a very big family person. And obviously being from Overland Park, it's really close. I can be with my family, but I felt like getting out of it's a healthy range of about an hour and a half to an hour 45 drive. So it gave me the ability to come back and see my family and root my little brother on when it comes to baseball, but at the same time have that distance where I have a little bit more freedom. But I mean, the Osho is like the coach there is amazing. Coach Murray was one of my best friends still is one of my best friends. I absolutely love the guy. His coaching tactics were just, I'm hoping someday when I get into coaching, I can follow in his footsteps. The guy was the perfect amount of hard and soft where he really pushed you. He yelled at you, got you into shape. But at the same time, when you get off the field, the guys, you can't not love him. He's a really good dude. And uh, I really got to know him when I went on my visit there and went and visited twice there. Got really close with Coach Gilner as well on those visits. And I kind of just fell in love with that feeling of you really got to grind everything out and that's what they really pushed at Neo show and I mean freshman year was pretty rough COVID cut us short we only played about 16-ish games got a few appearances and relief I I really wish COVID didn't cut us short because that roster was just so stacked I felt like we really would have won through the Jayhawk league but COVID cutting us short we still had a pretty good year for the most part I, on the other hand, didn't, I couldn't really find the strike zone for the most part, went in, got fixed when I came back home. And 
Uh, second year there, I had a better year, became a starter, um, took a lot of pride in being able to throw a complete game. My arm has always been a pretty rubber band arm, so been able to throw a lot of pitches and be able to get late into starts. Um, and then that third year, I just something clicked. Um, I found those pitches that I really needed to have to be able to be a starter. I uh, really took to heart, making sure to fill up that strike zone, get early strikeout, um, get in the count early. I really love the weak early contact. I mean, for the most part, my ball moves a lot. So the biggest thing I had to do was try to miss barrels. And it wasn't miss bats. It was miss barrels that entire year. And I got, I racked up a lot of strikeouts that year, but for the most part, I liked being able to give our team a complete game and that only if you fill up the zone early and counts and make those hitters put the ball in play. And hitting is a hard thing to do in this sport. So I really tried to take advantage of that and ended up having a heck of a year and talking to St. Louis and a few other schools. And I just felt St. Louis fit me the best. And the academics obviously were just off the charts and just kind of fell in love with the coaches there. So I, that was a pretty clear choice to me. Yeah. And, and as a starting pitcher, I mean, take me through kind of the preparation on the days leading up to start day. Cause for me personally, I was a PO all through high school. I, I, my last year playing baseball was my senior year of high school, but PO all through high school. And I ended up being a reliever my last two years because the, the weight of being a starting pitcher, just, it, it takes a lot out of you. You're thinking about it during class, you know, you know, days ahead of time and it's always on your mind. Uh, but take me through kind of the the preparation in those days leading up to a start. Uh, I mean, I did. I had the privilege to being Saturday or Sunday, so uh, I didn't have to go to class before my starts, like uh, Henry Lipman ended up being able to do. But uh, I mean, I would let's go back two days before a start. Um, I'm a huge gym goer. I love lifting weights. I love lifting heavy weights. Ramon, our trainer, did a great job of making sure that I didn't overwork myself when it comes to lifting weights because Neosho, it was every day, work as hard as you can. And I really took that to heart and coming to SLU and him making sure that I stayed healthy before starts. Um, along with that, at Neosho, we ended up throwing pins the day before we started. And these were only about 10 pitch pins, feel out all our pitches. And uh, Coach Revlet. Uh, made sure that I didn't do that, obviously making sure my arm would stay fresh for the start. Um, always, I always made sure to have a great meal the night before. I'm a huge uh, no eater before the starts, which is not the most healthy thing for the most part, but I just, I had the biggest fear of cramping before I would pitch and I made sure not to eat. I drank a lot of water, but big, big dinner the night before and then no food before the game. Um, I'm not a huge uh, blocking everybody out kind of guy. I love talking to my teammates before starts. I love getting everybody kind of in the zone, having fun with one another. And that's what I really loved about this group is we just, everyone had fun with one another. And uh, before the game, early in the season, I would throw long toss before the game. And then that's a huge Trevor Bauer thing. I love to just throw it up in the air, let it spin off my fingers and carry for a little while. Um, but once it came later on into the season, it kind of came apparent that uh, if you want to go late into games, it's hard to blow all your bullets out playing catch. So Coach Revlet made sure that I didn't do that before games, made sure I got my arm fully prepared. Um, Jake McFarland at Adapt here gave me a routine that I do before every game, making sure my hips are mobile, making sure that my torso is mobile. Um, making sure that my arm and layback and everything is going to be healthy and make sure that I'm able to throw to my best, uh, best performances I can. And everything kind of just came together. And the second I stand up on that mound, it's like everything, everything happening in the world kind of just disappears and I get to focus in on pitching. And that's just honestly the beauty of pitching in my eye. It's just, that was my getaway from everything academics outside, like anything outside of baseball is just gone for me when I get on that mound. So it, pitching is kind of my peace spot even though it's a lot of havoc a lot of things going on it's it's where I kind of find peace with myself that's awesome and and I guess you, you did mention the food part of it and I was wondering about that 
how uptight are you about the nutrition element to your game? Like, is that something that like a lot of guys, a lot of teammates you have, do they slack off with it or some more serious than others? Do you guys have to have a group kind of nutrition plan or do you like slack off more than, I mean, what, what's kind of the food element to, uh, to your preparation and, and your game? Well, I mean, for the most part, huge protein intake. I'm huge on that. Uh, my roommates were huge, uh, dirty bolt guys in the fall, but when it came to springtime, we were all eating pretty healthy for the most part. Uh, Suzanne, our manager did an amazing job at getting us snacks that were healthy, but sometimes we had snacks that weren't so healthy, but for the most part, it's all about enjoying the game. And when you're a PO and you only throw once a week, most of the time, it's like, you kind of want to snack on some zebra cakes sometimes, man, that, that really hit the spot when we're just chilling, watching a game, but um for the most part we did a great job of making sure we eat healthy we always um st louis really took care of us when it came to money on the road and we would always go eat out at some really nice restaurants um i would always make sure that i had a good meal the night before our big thing was getting mexican food the night before my starts and the night after our or night after i pitch it was always steak steak always hit the spot and get the biggest steak i could possibly order and snarf it down i'm a I'm a pretty small body, but I can eat a lot of food at the same time. So um, for the most part, we did a great job of making sure that we ate healthy. And at the same time, we could also sneak in some cheap meals for the most part. All right, Owen, electric chair. What's your last meal? Oh, geez. Biggest T-bone you can possibly find. Just <laughs> me mashed potatoes and just some water, honestly, and that hits the spot. Some water. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Have to add in the water part of it. I like oh, that. Hydrated. Uh it and you seem to like take a lot of um a lot of pride in those complete games. And and that's one thing that I, I noticed on your your little stat sheet. Six complete games, I believe, in your last junior college season. Um how key is that for you to kind of start a game and 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 have the efficiency to go deep into the game and kind of save save your bullpen a little bit? And, uh, you know, that's something that you, you try to do every start, I'm sure. But what's the importance for you in, in terms of going deep into the game? I mean, if you're cruising, you don't want to come out of the game. That's the biggest thing, in my opinion. Um, at Neo Show, I did I had a great three-pitch mix. Uh, pitch calling was great. Um, and I took a lot of pro- – obviously, it was only seven innings. So here at the JUCOs here, we would play double headers, and we would play a seven inning and then a nine inning. And I always had the seven inning game, game three. And I took a lot of pride in making sure I could get all the way through those seven innings, make sure that we were having healthy arms and having our bullpen to be able to go into that nine inning game. Um, My junior year there, Dax Sharp did a great job at pitching the game after me. And there were a few games he was able to go all the way through. There were some that we had to pull him out early and we were able to bring in some really good relief arms and it made a huge difference being able to have complete games thrown before that. And this year it wasn't as it's so really hard to throw a complete game, nine inning game. Um, and this year I kind of lost my three picks pitch mix. And when you come through that order the third time, fourth time through, it's really hard to only really be able to throw that fastball and change up. And like I said, we're working on making sure I have that three or four pitch mix when I come back next uh, fall. But um I tried my best to go as far into games as I can, be able to save our pen. We had a really good pen this year. Um, we're, I think we'll have an even better pen. We're going to have a lot more experience this year. We had a lot of freshmen, a lot of transfer guys, and a lot of guys having their first year at a D1, and they kind of figured their stuff out towards the end of the year. Like I said, in the playoffs, we had some really good bullpen appearances from people, and everybody got a little taste of uh, – playoff division one baseball and i think i'm excited for next year because i think our bullpen is going to be stacked our starters are going to be back and they're going to be healthy and we're going to have a heck of a year i'm very excited a lot of freshmen are you ready to kind of take that leap to like a leadership position i'm sure you were probably a leader a leader in your own before but even more of a leadership position um for sure we have a lot of guys that are right about my age when it comes to pitching um and i think we all took a lot of pride in honestly leading each other. Um, whether you were a freshman or a super senior, everybody contributed when it came to leadership, picked each other up when we were down at the same time, kind of made sure that everyone was doing what they were supposed to do. 
And I think this year it's going to be even greater because those we're bringing in some really good arms next year. And we have a lot of returners when it comes to our pen. We only have a few guys leaving and graduating, but for the most part, everybody's coming back. They know how to run that program. And um, I think we're really going to be a force to reckon with this year. So if I were to ask, what is the, the scouting report on you? What would you, what would you respond with without giving too much away, obviously? Cause I don't know how many people in your yeah. league are going to be listening to this, but what do you kind of feature on the mound? What's kind of your style with, with getting hitters out and I guess some of your, your pitch mix. Uh, I was a huge fastball changeup guy. Um, I throw one of those four seam changeups, which a lot of guys work that now it's turning more of the splitter change, but for the most part, they throw a lot of two seam changeups. And I don't, at the time, I don't throw personally a, a four, I don't throw a two seam fastball. So all the fastballs that these guys were seeing were my four seam. When I was down in the zone, I had a lot of sync to it. I have a lot of arm side run, even though I throw from a pretty high arm slot. Um, pretty high spin on my fastball, but that changeup comes in spinning like a four seam fastball and it's six, seven miles an hour slower and really fools the hitters. And I only gave up a few really hard hit changeups this year. Um, we did a great job of mixing that in. Um, but I mean, I would say I was probably 60 ish, 60 to 70 percent fastball. That last outing I had against George Mason, we threw 66 pitches, had thrown one slider, two changeups, and everything else was fastballs just because I had my command that day. I have a lot of really good command with that fastball and changeup. So being able to put it where I want to and getting weak contact on both of those pitches makes a huge difference going late into games. And being able to put up the stats I did this year with really only a good and elite fastball and changeup mix, being able to add a good slider, being able to add a good curveball, it's going to really push me over the edge. And I'm really excited to be able to have those. And we brought up the technology a little bit. And I know that St. Louis has the technology and whether it be TrackMan or some of the other ones that are out there uh, and, and they share you the instant feedback during your bullpen. Uh, is that helpful to you? Like, do you understand any of that? Obviously an economics guy, you probably know math. You said you're good with numbers. Uh, but I, I guess how much of that do you understand and how much does it help? I mean, being I've, I've been a huge numbers guy all my life. I love the biometrics behind baseball. Um, for the longest time, I wanted to go into biometrics. I just can't get into the physical therapy side. Um, so for the most part, I, I understand everything that's being said. And Jake McFarland does an absolutely amazing job on making sure everybody understands what these numbers mean. Because, I mean, he could flip the iPad around on his track man and show some little kid what these numbers are and be like, hey, this is a good spin. But Jake makes sure everybody understands what these numbers mean and what you need to do to improve those numbers. Um, and we personally had a uh, rap soda at, or at a slew. So that was the big thing that we did. Um, we didn't use it a whole bunch because for the most part, it wasn't the spin that was the um, problem with me. It was more being able to command an off speed that was worth something. I had a big problem with backing up my sliders. And for the most part, that was a lot of the home runs I had given up this year were just backed up sliders. I wasn't being able to throw and along with some of the hits batsmen, but um, back here with Jake, I, he has a track man set up and every one of the bullpens I throw, he makes sure that I understand what the numbers mean. Um, he does a great job of explaining it to me and, my little brother works out there too, and it helps him be able to understand it. And I think he just does a great job of making sure that everybody gets an understanding of what the numbers mean. And um, it really does push you to the next level when you know how something feels and what those numbers correlate to it. And I guess one of the things that we uh, we have incorporated in Major League Baseball is the, the pitch clock. Do you guys have that at all? Because uh, I know it's supposed to be universally in installed, like, either next fall or next spring, or I forgot what it was, but do you guys have that? Does it affect any games or are you guys just used to it? Cause I know in, in MLB, it's kind of been the talk of town for the first few months. We do have the pitch clock. Um, I've personally never had any issues with it. I work really, really quick, almost too quick at times. And Rev really made sure that I slowed down, especially in bullpens. I'm just a quick worker. Um, I like to get that ball back and get back on the mound as quick as I can and throw the next pitch and try to get my team off the field as fast as possible. But 
we had a few instances that the batter took too long and he would get a strike or the pitcher took too long and would get a pitch clock violation and give us a ball. But for the most part, uh, everybody kind of did a great job in making sure they got up on the mound and threw a pitch before that clock goes off. And the umpires did a pretty good job in enforcing it. Obviously, we didn't get penalized a whole lot for it, but um, for the most part, when we did, they were on top of it. So um, the pitch clock was definitely different. Um, and now being with my little brother and his youth games, it's just the weirdest thing sitting there and watching a pitcher come set for 20, 30 seconds at a time trying to throw off the runner. And it's like, dude, you can't do that when you get to college. So it really, it's really weird to watch, but for the most part, uh, it wasn't hard for me to adjust to it. In the 35 seconds in between pitches, like it's, it gets kind of drowning a little bit. Um, and flipping gears here to kind of, um, and no pun intended, flipping gears here to bat flipping. I want to ask this because, you know, as a college athlete, let's say a guy hits a ball nine miles and he, he you know, chucks the bat, takes his time around the bases. Is the emotion that has become normalized in baseball something that you're in favor of? Or you do you still kind of have the old school mindset where it's like, you know, act like you've done it before? Or are you in favor of the excitement? Tell me, Tell me a little bit about your philosophy on that. Personally, I love it. Um, I'm a pretty emotional guy on the mound myself. I mean, if you get out of a big jam, there's nothing better than a big old fist pump. But for the most part, bat flips are fun to watch. Um, obviously, you'd rather not be on the wrong side of it. But I mean, heck, if you're able to hit that ball as far as you do, and it's a no doubter, flip the bat, man. It's it's brings entertainment for the baseball world. Um, I think it makes it more entertaining for those youth kids watching the game. It's I mean, obviously, everybody wants to be Tatis and hitting these huge bat flips after you hit a home run. But obviously, I don't think I don't agree with showing up people for the most part. But I mean, flip the bat if you want to have some fun with the game. Obviously, it's a, it's still a kid's game, no matter how old you are. Um, so whatever you got to do to have fun with the game, do it. I mean, it's even when you're getting paid to do it, it's it should be a hobby. It shouldn't be a job. Um, put some emotion into it. Not too much though, where you get out of control because I mean, you could get yourself way too hyped up to the point where you end up hurting yourself on the mound. But I mean, if you get out of a big jam, I mean, you should, you should definitely be excited. So I like the emotion being put in the games. I think it needs to, you need to control yourself when it comes to that. But for the most part, um, bat flip all you want, man. I mean, just don't give up a home run. If you don't want to, if you don't want to get bat flipped on, if you've got a problem with it, don't give it up well there you go no and my philosophy on it is like kind of what you said don't look stupid doing it like if you're gonna like that's the rule that's my big rule like you could do whatever you want but don't look stupid like i think marcelo zuna the braves hit a a a fly ball to center field in arizona and he thought he got it bat flipped jogged to first and it was a single because it banged off the wall and he didn't get to second base so that's like that's like, yeah, that's th- that just makes you look stupid. So you got to know you got it. And if, if you're pitching and a guy takes you deep in bat flips, you have the right of way to bring out the fist pump the next time if you get him. So uh, exactly. that's pretty awesome. Uh, and uh, Owen, a few more things here. We're going to do some rapid fire. So I, I'm stealing this from intentional talk. So don't mind me. Um, and it doesn't even have to be rapid fire. You could just answer these however you want. Uh, right. So the first one is, if you weren't trying to be a professional baseball player, what would you want to do? Um, the biggest thing around here is financial advising. Um, a lot of my brother's uh, teammates, parents do a lot of that around here. Um, I like manage. I want to be managing money. I want to be managing some rich people's money and hopefully coming rich off of it. Um, so that's that's my uh, that's where I want to go into. At the same time, I wouldn't mind getting into that baseball world when it comes to economics. So, whatever comes first, I'm going to grab it. and I'm going to run with it. I'm going to write your contact down for future advising. So <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, sure. Biggest superstition, I guess, in baseball. Or do you have any? Um, obviously, not eating before games is a big one for me. Um, but I've always, I've always tied my shoes three times before games. I think this started more at Neo show because, uh, we had Adidas cleats back then and some of the shoelaces get really long. So I just always tied it with three knots and I, I did exactly it. which ones you're talking I did, about. I did, too. Um, I did it 
my junior year. And I mean, I kind of stuck with it seeing how I had a great year. So that's, I would say that's probably my superstition. Yeah. I know exactly what to do as you're talking about too. Um, if, if there's a celebrity that would play you in a movie, who would it be? That is, that is a great question. I don't know what movie it would be, but <laughs> I mean, if I want to, I don't know many people that look like me, but I would definitely go McConaughey. I mean, I'm a huge fan of McConaughey. I can My see it. Loves it. And I mean, he's a Texas guy, so I would definitely go McConaughey. I could see it. That's a good answer. Uh, favorite TV show that you're currently binging? Um, I'm really late to the party, but I've been I've been grinding through some Outer Banks uh, on the airplanes and stuff. So that was a big one. And my family loves Manifest as well. If you guys haven't hopped on Manifest, that is a great show. So I finished that show and went to Outer Banks and been on it since. There you go. And then here's the uh, the last one. One place in the world that you want to visit, what would it be? Uh, I, I really want to go skiing in Japan. Uh, it's, it sounds kind of weird cause it's like Japan out of all the places, but I, <laughs> I mean, didn't even know they had snow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I was on the skiing grind when I was uh, a little bit younger. We have a, my family has a house down there in New Mexico, which again, some people don't even know has snow up there, but we have a house up there and we, we love to go skiing in the winter time. Can't really do that as much now that playing division one baseball you don't want to get hurt and lose that scholarship but um i would love to go skiing in japan for sure there you go i know like two separate people that have gone to japan in the last week and they're all going to the like the uh the tokyo giants and yeah giants games and everything so skiing in japan that's that's a new one that i haven't heard yet yes, sir. um owen i really appreciate you coming on man this was a blast and uh can't wait to see what you do uh next spring uh in st louis and uh yeah thanks for coming on man it was a blast thank you so much for having me this was great and uh do you want to kind of plug yourself where can people find you i know you're, you're on twitter uh od chaffin at so od and then c-h-a-f-f-i-n go ahead and hit it with a follow if you'd like to and our, our resident barstool athlete as well. Um, and uh, we're going to now pronounce you also the official college athlete in 2024 of the podcast. So we'll be following, oh, along, we'll be following you. you along because sure. um, I don't get to get college athletes on here very much. Um, it's usually a bunch of former big leaguers that are not washed, but are <laughs> just random yeah. guys. Um I and uh, it's good to get uh, someone on the radar who's still actively playing. So appreciate you coming on. And everybody could follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at RizzoCast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. Big shout out, by the way, to Susanna Ellis. We we mentioned her sure. briefly. Uh, she uh, She's the one that I, I actually saw Owen pitch in San Jose when St. Louis came to San Jose. And she's like, you got to come out to this game. And then she told me a little bit about you. And then we saw you dominate. So yeah. shout out to her who, and great, great. Uh, you brought up the snacks. I know she works hard on that yeah. and other stuff as well. So I had to Very shout her out. She was, she was great for our team. I mean, everybody loved her. She did a great job on making sure everybody was well fed and our laundry was done. So she, she was one of the best managers I've had for sure. So, and she's listening, you know, she is. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Susanna, you're awesome. There she, there it goes. Yeah, she's listening for sure. All right, everybody. Uh, we will see you next time. More things to come very soon. And have a good day.